Okay, before I get to the best list and the new reviews that I gotta do for this week of 2017, I want to talk about a couple of honorable mentions and dishonorable mentions that I missed when I did the dishonorable mentions and honorable mentions videos. The first honorable mention I want to talk about is Ed's of 17, which stars Haley Stainfield and Woody Harrelson. This movie is about a 16-year-old or 17-year-old uh, sophomore in high school, played by Haley Stainfield, who is having a lot of trouble in high school, and she finds out that her best friend is dating her brother. She doesn't really know how to deal with that, and she's just having trouble going through school, and doesn't like the fact that her brother is succeeding better in school than she is, and is better at getting friends than she is, and everything. She's caught in a little bit of a love triangle between two guys that she likes, one guy that she likes, and the other guy that likes her. And this movie was really good. I really did like this. I didn't know if I was going to like it because I didn't really like the trailer that much. One of the scenes in the trailer has Haley Stainfield typing a naughty text on her phone to the guy that she likes that works at a pet store. And right from that point, I didn't know if I was going to like the movie, so I decided to wait a week after the movie came out to see it because the other movies that were out at the time looked a little bit more interesting. And then when I saw it, I actually was pleasantly surprised. And it was a very good movie. It would be a little bit predictable, but still a very good movie. And Haley Stainfield is really good, and so is Woody Harrelson. And all the other actors that are in the movie were excellent, as well as Blake Jenner plays Haley's brother in the film. And it was just, just a really good movie. And Haley Lou Richardson plays Stainfield's best friend in the film, too. And she was also very good. Alright, the next honorable mention I want to talk about is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the Harry Potter prequel, which is set in the 1920s, starring Eddie Redmayne, Sue Watterson, and a couple other actors, as well as Colin Farrell as a villain. And the movie is really good. I like the fact that this movie was set in America, where the other films were set in Britain. And it was done very well, although much of the effects were in CG, and I wish there were more practical effects in this movie, but it was a really good movie. And I like the fact that it almost felt like Eddie Redmayne's character was kind of like the, the lead guy from the Pokemon series, He's trying to catch all the beasts, catch them all, gotta catch them all. <laughs> and one of the beasts is a, a platypus that likes to steal stuff, which almost reminded me of the platypus from Phineas and Ferb a little bit. And one of the other beasts was a walking stick-like creature, which was obviously a rip-off of Groot, or Baby Groot, I should say now. <laughs> but I really did like this movie, and it was a really good movie, so definitely check out Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. And finally, we're going to talk about the two dishonorable mentions. The Natalie Portman film that came out in 2016 in the January, February area. Jane Got a Gun. What a terrible western this movie was. This had Ewan McGregor in it and I forget who else was in the movie, but it was just not a good movie. It was so bad. I was expecting the movie to be a cool action movie with Natalie Portman kicking ass, but really most of the kicking ass is from the lead guy that she's with. Not, and Ewan McGregor plays the villain, I believe, in the film, if I remember right. And it was just not that good of a movie. I really only the climax was very good, but the rest of the movie just fell apart and it's just not a good film. And finally, I want to talk about a movie that I saw on Netflix that did come out in theaters for 2016, but I didn't get to see it until it came out on Netflix. Yoga Hosers, the new Kevin Smith film, which was in the same Canadian world that Tusk was in. Now, I enjoyed Tusk. Tusk was a movie about a character played by Justin Long that goes to Canada and gets kidnapped by this guy that wants to turn him into a human walrus. And that was a 
pretty good movie, even though it was kind of shocking when you see what Justin, Justin Long looks like as the human walrus character, and that was just a bit much, but I did like the movie, and it was a bit suspenseful. But Yoga Hosers was so stupid and annoying. Yoga Hosers has Kenneth Smith's daughter, Harley Quinn Smith, and Johnny Depp's daughter, Amber Depp, doing their, their store clerk roles that they did in Tusk. Only they're now the main characters. And they meet these two guys that they like very much. And they decide to throw a party in the, the convenience store so they, they can get to know these two guys. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Throw a party in the business where you work at. I'm sure your boss is not going to find out about that. <laughs> and they get attacked by these Bratwurst uh, Nazis, whatever they are. They also have a, a yoga teacher, which is played by Justin Long, and Haley Joe Osmond shows up in the movie as well. And Johnny Depp playing the same character they played in Tusk. The movie was just not good, and I really got annoyed by the catchphrase that was going on in this movie over and over again. The Canadian way of saying sorry about that, only it's sorry boop that, and... The first couple times I heard that catchphrase, it, it was funny. But after the fifth, sixth, seventh, and whatever time, it was so annoying. It was like enough of that joke already. And there's this other running gag of the girls being so much into Instagram and texting that every time you see a character pop up in this movie, they are introduced in text and Instagram fashion, and it's just so stupid. And a lot of characters that are introduced only, only appear once in the movie, and that is so dumb to waste that kind of an introduction on characters that only appear once in a movie. That is so stupid. And the cameos that come up in this movie, I feel so sorry for the people that were dragged into this film, like Stan Lee, and Kevin Conroy, who did the best Batman voice ever, and it was just such a stupid movie. What the heck? I hated this movie. This movie's not even worth a Netflix watch, and certainly not worth going to the theaters to see, so thank goodness I didn't see it in the theaters. That was a really terrible movie. And that's all I gotta say for honorable mentions and dishonorable mentions. The next videos will be on the latest reviews that I saw for this for this week. Um, Silence, S Sleepless, Bye Bye Man, and Patriots Day, and the two halves of the best list for 2016.